Hey, Sven the Slayer here once again, and welcome back to Star Maid. This is episode 10 of my Practical Logic series, and in today's episode, I'm going to be covering pulse clocks a little more in depth. So what we have here is several different variations of the pulse clock. Now, in episode 4, I did briefly cover how pulse clocks worked, but I did not do a step-by-step -step on how to build them, so that's what I'll be doing on this episode. I also referred to them as unstable clocks, uh, but I think pulse clock is a much better name for them. It's just more descriptive. So what we have here is a high pulse clock, and this is very similar to the one on the episode 4 board. I just have the different parts separated out. Over here we just have the same thing, but this one has an inverted input. So it's on when the activator is low, and this works for connecting them to docks. And this one also has only a 4 tick, 2 second pulse clock, and a 2 second delay chain. So what happens with this one is it'll send out a pulse every 2 seconds, but since the delay chain is connected to the end, it'll be basically 8 seconds or 4 seconds long, and just have 2 ticks in it each. And this way you can create really long uh, delay chains and control the distance between different pulses because you might not want to have a pulse clock the entire length of your runway or such. Uh, over here I just have a low pulse clock which is built exactly the same way as the high pulse clock except you swap out the ORs for ANDs and ANDs for ORs. And lastly I have a uh, high pulse clock, but this one has a one second pulse that runs through it, and to achieve that you need a special pulse limiter here. Okay, let me show you how to build this. So first we'll want our input, which is simple, it is just an activator. Select the activator, place a knot, and then next we'll need to place um, what that input will interact with. So we'll need an AND, and that AND gets wired into a delay, and then we also need an OR block. Now, I didn't connect these up to anything, because this step will change depending on what you want. Now, if you want the signal, the high signal of this activator to start the clock, you will wire the activator into the AND, and the NOT into the OR. Now, if you want the clock to be started when the signal is low, you'll wire the activator into the OR and the NOT into the AND. So that would be for, say, um, running lights on a potential dock. But we'll just start with a high, um, this high, start the, the high pulse clock. So activator into AND, NOT into OR. So next up, this OR will become our pulse limiter. And to do that, we want to s select the uh, OR, and then place down a NOT and a delay, and then both of those delays get wired into, not both delays, the NOT gets wired into an AND, and then the delay gets wired into the AND. Now this is an inverted high pulse limiter, so when we you know, get it in a state where it's ready to go, anytime this OR goes low, it'll send out a high pulse. And then that high pulse from the AND starts our loop of the delay chain. Now, we could easily just take this and create our delay chain, which I will actually do now. And we have a functioning pulse clock. Um, this is the pulse clock without any of the error checking systems, but it's it functions. Now to add error checking in it, we'll have to first um, create an auto start essentially. So to do that, you'll want to connect every delay in this chain up to the OR from our pulse clock here. So what that means is any time this goes low now, it'll send out a pulse, so we can force a break. 
and you'll see that it pulsed again and started the loop over. So when the game is loading, if for whatever reason the pulse gets lost, it'll start the start the system over again. Now, to do error protection from longer pulses, such as if a extra long pulse gets in, this will actually freeze the clock. Or, I didn't freeze it, because it... I can freeze it, but yeah. So, to prevent this, we'll need an AND. And then that AND gets wired into a NOT. And let's just turn that NOT on. And then this NOT goes into the AND on the delay chain. So what this does is we can take a signal from the last two blocks in the delay chain and what happens is this AND will go high turning off this knot when these two blocks are both high and then it'll deactivate this AND here stopping the signal from going through until it is as short as it's supposed to be and we can actually control the length of that pulse by changing the distance between the two blocks connected to this AND. So if we disconnect this one and connect that one, actually it doesn't matter if you connect them all, it's just easier just to connect the first and the last one. So now if we feed an extra long pulse in here, it'll get removed. But it'll now be one second instead of half a second. and then set it up to remove the extra half a second. So that is how you build the basic uh, pulse clock. Now if you wanted this to be a high pulse um, you know, space with a low pulse uh, running through it, you would essentially just replace this AND with an OR, replace this AND with an OR, replace this OR with an AND, and replace this AND with an OR. So you just invert all of the ands and all of the ors. So now I'll ha show you how to add the option of increasing the length of the pulse in this clock. So normally with a pulse limiter to increase the length of the pulse you just increase the delay chain here, but that doesn't work in this case. So what happens is when this pulse limiter pulses on it sends a s its pulse into the delay chain, but then the delay chain sends it right back into the OR, sending this OR high again, which then turns off the pulse. So this one second pulse limiter actually only sends a single half second pulse. So to fix that, what we'll have to do is give it a memory cell. So just you erase that really quick if you already have it, or if you're building it from scratch, it won't matter. So from this OR, we want to place down an AND, select that AND and place down an OR, select the OR and wire it back into the AND. Now, this is a two-block memory cell, which is currently being referred to as a Sven cell. <laughs> and then from here, we want to take a signal from either OR, it doesn't matter, these should always be in the same state, and wire in a knot, that knot into the length of delay chain we want our pulse to be, and then the signal from the end of that delay chain into the OR. And to complete it, we just want to take this knot into the first delay here to start our pulse out. So now we will turn it on and the memory cell will be set so it doesn't matter, it doesn't care what state the OR is. And then once the delay runs through here, it'll turn off the memory cell. Oh yeah, the memory cell has to be in a in a high state too. There we go. So there's our full second pulse, but you'll see that it eliminated the full second pulse from it, so we'll just have to turn this into a clear a half second. Now, there's another downside of this system is there's 
no easy way to detect that there's only a half second pulse running through it. You'd basically have to wire ANDs into every possible combination of delay and run that against this OR in order to deter, you know, absolutely guarantee that there won't be a half second pulse running through here. So that'll about cover it for this episode. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something, and I will see you in the next video.